Hello, this is Chris Neal from South Plains College. Welcome to my Pro Tools how-to video series. This video is on a multi-track playlist recording technique, and we'll cover several things in here, setting up naming tracks, cascading inputs, multi-track playlist technique, copying to send, track grouping, and so forth. Throughout the video, you will see some of my keystrokes at the bottom of the screen, and here's a key to some of the modifiers being used throughout the video. Here are some of the shortcuts that we we'll use throughout the video. Okay, so rather than using your valuable studio time to set up your Pro Tools session, you can do it in advance in the lab if you've done a little research as to what you're going to be recording. So here we go. I'm going to set up, create some new tracks, Command-Shift-N. I can use the Command key in the left, right arrow to set the width of the track, mono, stereo, and so forth. I can use the Command and up, down arrow to set the track type, and I can hit Command plus to add another lane to this new track dialog. So add some more lanes here. Got a, one more mono, that'll be for bass, and one more stereo for keys. So in this dialog, we can add the tracks in the order that we're going to use them. So example, four mono for drums, and then a stereo for drums, and a mono for bass, and then a stereo for the keyboard. So hit Create, and there we go. All right, so let's name the tracks. So we're going to click on the first track, open up the naming dialog box. All right, so we'll go through... I'm going to type the name, and then I can use Command, left or right arrow, um, and that will take me to the previous or the next uh, track. So I can kind of go through them and name them all. So I hit Command, right, go to the snare, Command, right, arrow, go to the next track, Tom 1, Command, right, arrow, Tom 2, and so forth. Okay, finishing up with the keyboard. And now we'll move on. And the next thing that we should do is in the comment portion of the track, go to each one and list the microphone and mic placement, stereo miking technique, things like that in the comment portion. Good idea, again, on your session prep to write down mic preamp settings, compressors, things that you might be using in the uh, signal chain prior to recording. So take notes here, and that way you don't have to remember. So again, you can save some precious time in your session by having a lot of this stuff set up before you even get into the studio. So you can set this up in the lab. We don't have all the inputs in the lab that you have in the studios. So your inputs will be just one or two or one and two. So filling out that session prep form will help you plan and prepare and be able to get your session all set up before you even get in the studio. Again, saving you valuable time you can spend on perfecting mic placement. So again, if you'd set your session up in the lab and you bring it into the studio, this is what your inputs might look like, just all one and two. So we're going to use a function that can save a lot of time called cascading. So first we'll select all these tracks. Here we go, these four. And we'll hold down Option shift, because that's the do to all selected. And I'm going to add command and select an input. And you see I select input one on the kick track, and it sets two, three, and four on the next track, saving me, again, valuable time. So the next track, since they're just one-offs, I kind of have to do them one at a time. And it is based on format, so you can't add do a stereo at the same time as you're doing a bunch of mono. So we'll do those individually. Okay, so we magically transition, and here's our actual setup with all the tracks that we're going to do. And we look at the mixer window, and we see I've labeled them all and put into the comments the microphone being used. And there's a few other things I can do to get my session ready for recording later on. I can create a click track and have that ready. So track, create click. There it is. Move it over here to the side, whatever. Some people like at the beginning, end, whatever. There's my click track. Maybe I want a different sound um, than the uh, default. Uh, so there's where you can set them. Uh, and again, you might want to have the people listen to it and see what they like. See if they're happy with your choices. So I chose a shaker there. So we can go over to the uh, edit window and show the MIDI controls. So we can turn on and off the click and count off, which you can do with the 7, 8, 
uh, on the number pad. All right, so we should set up headphones. So we're going to select all of the tracks in our session that we want to go to the headphone. So I'm going to select all tracks, uh, and then I'll reroute certain things to the more me's. So let's go to that send and say new track and create a stereo aux input named it q left right so there we are okay we'll pick out some things to go to more me's that way the uh, musicians can choose how much of any specific instrument they're hearing in their mix and i don't have to make those changes so i think i'll take the bass and the keys and route those to a more me and again, on their headphone box, they can then adjust their levels of that. And we'll also put the click on a more me so each person can control how much of the click that they want. So let's show the expanded view by command clicking to the left of that send. And then we'll set up the more me. So on the base, we're going to go to the existing send. We are going to click and choose new track. And we will set it to be a mono aux input track. And we will name it Q Bass and hit create. And there we go. We'll go to the next one. Again, new track, mono, name that one Q Keys. Hit create. Go to the click. Again, new track, mono aux Q. Click create. Now I'll select by holding down command. Select those and move those to the end. And now I should solo isolate these. So I'm going to select all of these Q aux inputs. Hold down Option, Shift, and Command and click on the solo to solo isolate all of those. So if I solo up a track, it doesn't mute this track and uh, kill it in the headphones. So I can use my cascading feature to set outputs as well as inputs. So I can't do a stereo and monos. So I'll take the stereo out of the selection and I'm going to hold down Option, Shift, Command and go to the output and select Q3 and you see it goes Q3, 4, and 5. And then I'll select the uh, stereo and send that out Q1, 2. Okay, so my cues are solo isolated and I need to send the tracks to the headphones. So I'm going to hold Option and click on the Send Fader to send it to Unity. So on Mormies, you usually you want to set those to Unity and you give them so you're giving them everything you got. So I'm going to select the drums. And what I want is I already have a decent mix here. Let me make a few adjustments, but I already have a decent mix of the drums going. You can play here your mix. And then when you're happy with the mix, you think that's a good mix for them. And the headphones, you can then copy your mix up to that send. Again, saving you time. So we are going to select the tracks that we want to copy the volume and pan information up to a send so that the headphone mix Q left, right is resembles what we're hearing when we hit play. So we're going to go to the edit window. We're going to go to automation and choose copy to send. The shortcut is command option H and you should write that down so you can use it later. All right, in the resulting dialog box, we're going to copy the current value of volume and pan up to send E and then hit OK. And we see how our mix gets put up there. All right, headphones need to be pre, so we need to hold down Option and click on the P in that send area to set all of our headphone sends to pre-fader. Initially, I forgot to set the sends to pre-fader, and you can see how it goes back to where it wasn't set. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to group tracks. So I'm going to select all the tracks that I'm going to record in this basic track section, and I'm going to group them. So I can go to the track menu and choose group, or I can use command G to group tracks. So that's what we're going to do. Command G brings up our grouping window. We're going to type in name. I like to put temp in the name so I know I can delete it. Temp basic track. And then on the ID, I usually choose a letter higher in the alphabet, choose Y here. So set it to mix and edit. There's all my tracks that have been assigned and I hit okay. And now all of those tracks are grouped and that's gonna help us with some functions as we track. So back over in the edit window, you can see all of my tracks named. Um, obviously you need to kind of go through a sound check and get all your levels set properly because we're gonna just track here in just a second. Uh, but you can see I got all my tracks named, kick in, out, so forth. They're grouped, so when I perform a function on one of them, like new playlist, it will work on all of the tracks. So I need to record and enable my tracks, so I'm going to hold down Option Shift and click on the uh, record button to record and enable all my tracks. 
Now, before you record anything, the most important part of this is I am going to go and create a new playlist before I do any recording. So it doesn't matter which track you click on, but you're going to go up. So I'll go up to kick and click and choose new playlist. Now you can also use control backslash. All right, so you see how all of the tracks get a dot one in their name, and I'm about to record take one. So all of the audio files that get recorded are going to have dot one in their name, and I will always be able to tell that these are the tracks that are take one. Okay, there's take one completed. So option A gets everything on screen, resets the zoom. All right, so with this method, I can really quickly be ready to record another take. All I have to do is hit return, control backslash, and record. And I'm rolling on another take. All right, so I'm going to go here on any of the tracks, choose new playlist. Again, control backslash, and you see that all have a two, and we record on take two. So there's take two. We see the name O2 and all the name on all the audio files. Again, we can really quickly be ready for take three by just going to any one of the tracks, choosing new playlist or using control backslash. We're ready for take three. And here we go. All right, so there's take three. Quickly, we want to go to take four, so we do new playlist. We get 04 in the name, and we roll. All right, there's take four, option A gets everything on screen. So beauty of this system is we really can quickly go through the different takes. So the band wants to come in, we want to listen to the different takes, pick which one is the best take. We can really quickly and easily go through there by just clicking on the playlist selector and choosing one of the different playlists and hitting play and auditioning it, letting them hear um, the takes. So let's play a little bit. Uh, let's turn off the click track. So let's hear a different one. Let's go to take three and hit play. How about take four? All right, so you get the idea. All right, so once the band's decided what is their favorite take and the one that they want to proceed with by adding other instruments on top of, so what we're going to do is we're going to go and select the playlist that doesn't have a number in its name. So we choose Tom 2 here, and it's going to set all of them to the original track name. Now we'll go into Playlist View, and we will find Take 4. There it is, Take 4 down at the bottom. And we are going to triple-click on that track with the Selector tool, and that will select all regions on that track. And then we're going to copy that up to the main playlist, or promote it up with this arrow. Or you can use Control Option V, and that will copy it up to the main playlist or promote it up to the main playlist. Now we have it here. If we make edits on it, we always have the original down there on that playlist that's untouched. 
So it's kind of a little safety precaution there. If we end up making some edits or slipping a track uh, accidentally, not quite sure what happened, we can always kind of go back to this and copy sections back up and find out where our timing issues might be. So we'll go back over into waveform view. We'll see all of our tracks there. There we go. We're ready to move on. We're ready to start overdubbing. And in the next video, we will go into overdubbing.